Well, it's time for a health report, and joining us now is Africa 54 health correspondent Lino Madu with the latest information on cancer. Hey, Lino. Thank you, Vince. And a World Cancer Day was commemorated Monday with the theme, I Am and I Will. The yearly event is an initiative of the Union for International Cancer Control. Get this, 9.6 million people die each year of cancer. Cancer is the second leading cause of death worldwide. 70% of death occur in low to middle income nations and one third of common cancers are preventable. Joining me now live via Skype from Geneva, Switzerland for more is Dr. Kerry Adams, Chief Executive Officer of the Union for International Cancer Control, a leading organization in the global fight against cancer. Dr. Adams, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. The theme this year was uh, I am and I will, urging for personal commitment. What type of commitment is being encouraged? Well, that very much depends on the individual. I mean, the, the theme is being crafted to be usable by anyone. I mean, uh, for example, I am a father and I will encourage my children to lead healthy lives. I, I'm a CEO of a cancer organization and I will encourage my employees to live healthy lives, to um, encourage their children not to smoke and things like that. So it depends who you are. It could even be a country or a city. So it's a very flexible way of getting people to not just engage in the day itself, but also say what they will do, what action they will take. And that's been a theme that we've seen right around the world in the last 24 hours. Individuals, companies, governments making commitments to do something to help cancer control. Cancer has been around for many, many years. There have been a lot of progress in terms of research. However, many challenges remain. What are some of the most urgent issues in the current global fight uh, for cancer, against cancer? Yeah, there is a, I often get asked a question, is there a cure for cancer? But of course, we've made great progress over the last 40 to 50 years. I mean, take, for example, cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is a disease which is caused by a virus, human papillomavirus. There are vaccinations available for young girls to take, uh, to have, which actually prevent them from having cervical cancer. It can be detected early and it can be treated successfully. The same with breast cancer. If it's detected early, we have all the necessary drugs, medicines, and we have the technologies to actually treat breast cancer successfully. The challenge we face as a community is although we have made advances, many people still present too late, i.e. when the cancer is too advanced, for those treatments to work effectively. And unfortunately, in many low and middle income countries, we do have a lack of treatment facilities per se. So there's not enough radiotherapy, the available medicines are not sufficient to actually cope with the demand. So there's lots that we can do. We've made great advances, but we have the challenge of early presentation and at the same time, making treatment and care more available to populations around the world. So how is the UICC, your organization, spearheading this global fight against cancer? What type of impact have you seen over the years? Well, the last uh, 24 hours, we've had hopefully been raising the discussion about cancer globally in the media. The fact that I'm talking to you now is a, a great step in the right direction, that people are talking about cancer in a more open way, which is reducing the myths and misconceptions about it. But from an organization which is based in Geneva, our role is to work with the World Health Organization and other UN United Nations agencies to make sure that they put cancer on the global health and development agenda. And in 2017, we were able to secure a cancer cancer resolution, which is a commitment by all countries around the world to put cancer as a health agenda in their own health budgets, in their own health plans. So the challenge we face now is to make sure that every country has a national cancer control plan, which is funded and can deliver the change that's required in that specific country. So Dr. Adams, before we wrap, what do you hope to see moving forward, of course, besides the cure for cancer? Well, it would be lovely if there was a cure for cancer. It's a highly complex set of diseases, and I think cure for cancer is something that well beyond my lifetime. However, we know so much today which we can do today to reduce the incidence and also to improve survival. So a simple thing that I would love to see around the world is countries adopt tobacco control as a major part of their 
um, initiative to improve the health of their community. We are seeing tobacco companies moving out of developed countries and they are targeting low and middle income countries today. And if that happens and it grows at the rate that's predicted, then we unfortunately will face a, another generation of an incredible amount of cancer. And I don't think that's the right thing that we should be facing. And uh, tobacco and cancer, definitely another discussion that is a must. Uh, Dr. Adams, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for the opportunity. And that was Dr. Kerry Adams. He is the Chief Executive Officer of the Union for International Cancer Control. Now, as we've mentioned, cancer remains one of the world's leading causes of death. Last year, there were nearly 2 million new cases of cancer worldwide, and more than 600,000 people died of the disease. But progress is being made. Cancer mortality rates have been going down for decades, and new technology is making early detection easier. VOA's Kevin Egnax reports. Although cancer remains one of the world's leading causes of death, diagnosing it early greatly increases the chances of survival. In areas without well-trained pathologists, catching the disease early can be difficult. This new device, called Tiny, now being tested in Uganda, could change that. When someone comes to us with the skin showing possible signs of the cancer, we take off a tissue and take out DNA and then put it in this device and see if we can grow more of that viral DNA. And that's how we tell how much, whether or not you have it. TINY is short for Tiny Isothermal Nucleic Acid Quantification System. And what it does is detect cancerous tissue in as little as two hours instead of days. Now for the standard uh, pathology, depending on where you go, in a private setting, you could even have a result in three or four days, or sometimes when you expedite the process, if in case you have an emergency, it could give you three or five days, but on occasion, most of our patients take between 10 to 14 days. The device also makes diagnosis virtually error-free. Given the tiny method eliminating most of these steps that are prone to error, then I'm looking at China giving us a margin of over about 1%. Right now, Tiny is being tested as a simple way to detect a common form of cancer called Kaposi's sarcoma. But according to researchers, that's just the start. I think this device is applied all, all over. It can be applied all over. If you have DNA in a cell and that cell is cancerous, you could be able to use Tiny. Researchers believe Tiny may be available commercially in as few as five years. Kevin Enix, VOA News. And that's today's health report. To stay in touch, find me on Twitter at Lenormudu. Vincent, back to you.